Good morning guys. It is the beginning of March break, which means that I have an entire week off from work. That is working at the school that I work at. I do still have some research work that I will be doing this week. But other than that, I have an entire week and I have decided to make the most of it and make it the most bookish literary week of my life. So I have set some very ambitious goals for myself and I'm really hoping that I can achieve all of them this week. Goal number one, wake up at eight o'clock every morning and start the day with at least an hour of reading, maybe a little bit of writing and prayer. Goal number two, do 10 to 20 hours of historical research, finish three books or more if possible, write 5,000 to 10,000 words on my new novel, visit at least three bookstores, sit down and read in three new locations, so not in my house, but places around town, make one piece of book-related art, make appropriate edits on my novel as they come in, visit at least one antique market, write one Substack post, and listen to as many literary podcasts as possible, and watch literary movies when possible. So I'm currently in the process of making a calendar for my week. I've got all my goals here. I'm just so excited to leave behind most of my work responsibilities and just focus on reading and writing and doing the things I love and being creatively productive. So I hope that you guys will enjoy this video and follow along as I have a very bookish March break. guys it's about noon and i've been having a fantastic monday morning i read for an hour i've been working on my new novel i worked a bunch on it yesterday sunday as well and i've already written almost 4000 words i'm already 4000 words in so that is super exciting and i'm having a blast writing it this new model is based off of myself and my three closest friends and our experience as a group going through university and navigating young adult life and it's just so fun because I have so much content to work with because we've been through so much together. And I love just exaggerating it and giving my friends false names and just romanticizing those fantastic years. So that's really fun. I also have been seeing a lot of edits coming in on my completed novel, which is exciting. Edits both from my professional editor and some friends. So I'm looking forward to going through those. Also, I made this bookmark yesterday, which has a picture of Fyodor Dostoevsky in the springtime and I called it a Russian spring and I just think it's kind of goofy and silly and cute and I love it. I mean I guess technically this counts as my bookish art piece goal but I think I'm going to be making more things throughout the week just for fun as well. So now I'm going to sit down and do some research work. I want to do at least three hours of research every day for the professor which is kind of intimidating to approach because since it's so intense it's hard for me to do research for more than two hours at a time but i really want to get it all out of the way in one shot so i can go back to my creative work so we will see how that goes Morning guys, it is Tuesday and I went out for coffee with a friend this morning and didn't film anything. It's already almost noon 
And so I'm gonna get started today on a couple more hours of research and then hopefully some writing. I did a lot of writing last night as well that I didn't film, so things are going super well on the new novel and I'm having so much fun with it. Yeah, that's kind of what my afternoon is looking like so far. I might go out and try to find a new spot to work in. We'll see. Sometimes I just really like the quiet and privacy of my own home. It's a really good workspace. But I know that's boring for you guys to watch me in this tiny little house constantly. So we'll see. I found the most delightful poem, entitled Westminster Abbey by Francis Beaumont. After going through this whole collection, Poems of London, this is the poem that stands out the most to me. I love its rhythm, I love its rhyme, and I love what the poet is saying. Westminster Abbey. Mortality, behold and fear, what a change of flesh is here. Think how many royal bones sleep within this heap of stones. Hence removed from beds of ease, dainty fare and what might please, fretted roofs and costly shows to a roof that flats the nose which proclaims all flesh is grass how the world's fair glories pass that there is no trust in health in youth in age in greatness wealth for if such could have reprieved those had been immortal lived know from this the world a snare how that greatness is but care how all pleasures are but pain and how short they do remain for here they lie, had realms and lands, that now want strength to stir their hands. Where now from pulpits sealed with dust, they preach, in greatness is no trust. Here's an acre sown indeed, with the richest, royalest seed, that the earth did e'er suck in, since the first man died of sin. Here the bones of birth had cried, though gods they were, as men they died. Here are sands, ignoble things, dropped from the ruined sides of kings, with whom the poor man's earth being shown, the difference is not easily known. Here is a world of pomp and state, forgotten, dead, disconsolate. Think then, this scythe that mows down kings, exempts no meaner mortal things. Then bid the wanton lady tread amid these mazes of the dead, and these, truly understood, more shall cool and quench the blood than her many sports a day and her nightly wanton play bid her paint till day of doom to this favor she must come bid the merchant gather wealth the usurer exact by stealth the proud man beat it from his thought yet to this shape all must be brought so i have this stunning print of westminster abbey and i'm thinking that i might write out that poem on this art print just lightly in the background the problem is I don't have a pencil, so I will be using a pen, which means I cannot mess this up. But I think, you know, just some lines in the background like this will look really cool, so I'm going to give it a shot.
Hey guys, so I just got back from Paris with my best friend and I just really want to quickly show you my haul. I got some awesome books and some awesome things for my house from different vintage stores. So first for the books, I got The Tenants of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. I haven't mu read much of Anne Bronte's works. I, I've read more of Charlotte Bronte, so I'm excited to give this sister a read, see what I think of her. I got Anne of the Island by Ellen Montgomery. This is the third book in the series about Anne of Green Gables. I have one and two of this edition and I want to collect the whole series of, in this edition because I just think it's a very springy, cute, classic Canadian vibe. Love it. Excited to read that this spring. Then I got The Oxford Book of Oxford by chosen and edited by Jan Morris. My dreams are all of Oxford. When I dream of my ideal life, I am in those hallowed halls. I'm walking those enchanting streets. I am just obsessed with this great, great university. I wish with all my heart that I could have studied there. Um, and maybe I still will. I, I've never actually tried. Anyways, I'm excited to learn more about that fabulous institution through this book. And I also just love the look of it. I think it's very springy, charming. I love the artwork and just, Oh, Oxford, you have my heart. And then I have Devils or Demons by Fyodor Dostoevsky, which I'm going to be adding to my Year of Dostoevsky reading list. I haven't read this one and I and I don't own it, so I'm really glad I came across this. I got a super good deal on it, maybe $10 for this thick novel. So excited to read that one this year as well. Then I got a number of really sweet greeting cards that I'll just show you briefly. Usually I do make my own cards, but these I just, like, come on. It's so beautiful. I just, I couldn't leave them. I just had to have them. And hopefully we'll be able to give those out to friends in the future. Then I got this absolutely charming Delfblau mug from Holland. The inscription on the bottom says, Delfblau handgemacht, handmade, made in Holland. AG, whoever's initials those are. If you look around my house, you will see prints and patterns just like this because I'm obsessed with this old Dutch style that the Dutch actually did copy from the Chinese, so give credit where credit is due. Anyways, in love with that mug. And then I got this beautiful wicker sewing basket that I'm going to put all my embroidery threads in. I'm hoping to get back into embroidery this summer and I just needed a place to store my goods and I thought this was adorable and very springy so I'm excited to have this sitting around. That was my haul of my day in Paris.